All right, so this is lesson one of Saxon course two, arithmetic with whole numbers and money and variables and evaluation. So when we're adding up whole numbers, you have to make sure to line up the numbers in the correct place value. So I would have 36, okay, 472, and 3,614. Make sure that the ones place, tens place, and hundreds and thousands place are all lined up. Then I'm going to go uh, row by row, or column by column. 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 4 is 12. I'm going to carry my 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 7 is 11, plus 1 is 12. Carry my 1. 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 1 is 11, carry my 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. So my answer is going to be 4,122. Now with money, again, you have to line up the place values, and the easiest way to do that is to do it by the decimal point. So we have a dollar forty-five. Okay, we're adding $6. So $6 is my whole number, it's going to go in the ones place, and I'm going to add a decimal and two zeros. So I have all of my place values. And then 8 cents is 0 0.08. So when I add these up, 8 plus 5 is 13. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. The decimal point comes straight down. Okay. And then 1 plus 6 is 7. So my answer is $7.53. The same with subtracting, I need to make sure that my my place value is lined up. So again, we have 5,207 minus 948. I cannot take 8 away from 7, so I'm going to borrow from the 2. 2 becomes a 1. The 0 becomes a 10, which then I borrow again, and it becomes a 9 and the 7 becomes a 17. So 17 minus 8 is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. N um, 1 cannot take 9 away from 1, so I'm going to borrow from the 4. But 5, 5 becomes a 4. 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 9 is 2, and then just my 4. So my answer is 4,259. With money, again, I have to line up my decimal places. So $5, okay, 25 cents becomes 0.25. I'm subtracting these. Okay, um, I'm going to have to borrow all the way over here from the 5. 5 becomes a 4. 0 becomes a, a 10, but I'm going to borrow from it, so it'll become a 9. And then this 0 becomes a 10. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. Decimal point comes straight down. And then my 4. So my answer is $4.75. All right, with multiplying, we usually put the number with the most digits on top. It makes it easier. So I'm going to do 100 and 64 times 23. Okay, we start with our with the ones place, so 3 times 4 is 12, carry my 1. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 is 19, carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Now I'm done with the 3, I'm going to cross it off and put a 0 underneath, because now I'm multiplying by 20, technically. So, if I put the 0 down, that takes care of the 20 part. So, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Okay. I'm going to add those together. 2 plus 0 is 2. 9 plus 8 is 17. Carry the 1. 4 plus 3 is 7, and then my 3. So my answer is 3,772. The second one, when I'm multiplying by a decimal, and with, I'm going to put the decimal number on top. Okay? And I'm going to multiply it by 20. 
Now with 20, I can go ahead and drop this zero down because anything times zero is always going to be zero. So I can just drop that down and cross it off. So I'm going to multiply by the two. Okay, and you don't do anything with the decimal to the very end. So two times eight is 16, carry the one. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13, carry the one. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Now to see how many decimal places we need, we're going to count over decimal places. So I have one, two decimal places. So I'm going to count over one, count over one, two decimal places here. So my answer is $93.60. And with this last problem, we have five times 29 cents. Whenever you see a number next to some parentheses, that always means multiply. So it's going to look like 29 cents, there's two ways to write it, you can 29 cents times five, or you can go 0.29 times 5. Either way works. So if I do 29 cents times 5 and I multiply it, I'll end up with 145 cents, which is the same as $1.45. Okay, if I multiply it the other way, I just automatically get $1.45. Alright, with division, we're going to turn these division problems into a division bar. So we have 1,234 divided by 56. When the problem is written this way, the first number always goes in the box. That's what I like to say. So if I draw my division box, the first number always goes inside. Okay, which means the second number is what goes outside. And I'm going to divide. So 56 goes into 100 and can't go into 1. So I put the X, can't go into 12. So it goes into 123 two times, which is 112. Okay, subtract that. And I get 11. And I bring down my 4. Okay. 56 is 114, 2 times as well, that's 112, subtract it, and I get 2 left over. So my answer is going to be 22, remainder 2. You may also be asked to write that as a fraction, which would be 22 and 2, 56, either way. Okay, with the second number, again, the first number, the number on top, goes inside my box. So it's going to be $12.60 divided by 5. In this case, my decimal place is going to go straight up. So 5 can't go into 1. 5 goes into 12 twice. That's 10. Subtract it. We get 2. Bring down the 6. 5 goes into 26 five times. That's 25. Subtract, get 1. Bring down the 0. 5 goes into 10 two times. So my answer is $2.52, because that zeroes out at the end. All right, so this last part is using variables, which are letters we use in the place of numbers that we're not sure about. So in this case, I'm doing these problems with x equals 10 and y equals 5. So if I do the first one, a, x plus y, I'm going to put 10 in for x, so it's going to be 10 plus, and y equals 5, so it's going to be 10 plus 5 equals 15. Okay. For b, it's x minus y, so it's going to be 10 minus 5, which is equal to 5. Okay. On c, I have x and y next to each other, which means that's multiply, so it's going to be 10 times 5, which is equal to 50. And the last one, D, um, is division. So it's going to be 10 divided by 5, which is equal to 2. And that's it for lesson 1.